Hi, today I want to talk to you about something that's very important in college life, in academia, and in whatever classes you're taking, and that is citing your sources. In pa classes where you have papers, like history classes uh, in this case, anytime you use a source, you have to cite it. Unless the idea is completely yours originally, it has to be cited. Whether you're getting it from a book, a journal, a television show, a film, a radio broadcast, an oral history, a primary source document, it has to be cited. And we're very serious about this. It's part of the academic honor code that you have to cite your sources and you have to do it properly. Otherwise, you run into trouble with a thing called plagiarism. Plagiarism is in the news today. And for academics and in colleges and universities, it's very important that students not commit that crime. And plagiarism is a crime. So whether you're getting information from um, a book or whether you're getting information from a journal article and you see the end notes at the bottom, all those are cited sources. And you have to do the same thing. How do we prove what we're trying to say whenever we make an argument in an article or a book? It is by citing our evidence. And how do other scholars test that? If you're a scientist, you repeat experiments to see if they hold validity, to see if they uh, can get the same results by doing the same things. In history and in other humanities courses, uh, we do this by going back to the original sources, going back to the primary sources or the secondary sources where someone wrote an article about and use those sources, we go back and we can verify. We can look at the interpretation. And many times, that's also how interpretations change. We've been talking about how inter interpretations change. That's because we've gone back and we've looked at the original sources from which the argument that the historian made, and then sometimes those interpretations change. Sometimes new evidence becomes available uh, that helps us re reinterpret those sources. And that's how new history is written. So. It's very important. I want to go through with you some basics about sources. A lot of people are scared about them. I don't know how to do that. What is a Chicago manual style or what is Turabian? They're interchangeable, but they frighten some people because they appear complex. Sometimes you'll see long, long sources. It's really basically very, very simple, and I'll get to that in this PowerPoint presentation. Where did you find that? That's the real question we want to know. When we're asking you to cite a source, it's because we want to know where you got the information from. And it's as simple as that. It's not an exercise in minutia. It's not just asking you because we're nitpicky. Historians and your history professors and other people uh, that you're going to run into throughout your college career ask you to do it because it is important. Why do you need to cite the source? And uh, just as a point of clarification, I'm citing this. Uh, most of the information I'm, I'm going to show you here comes directly from the Chicago Manual of Style, and it's cited in the note down at the bottom here. First of all, we do it because it's ethical. There are laws in place that require anyone who writes to identify sources, not only of quotes, but also of paraphrases or facts or opinions not generally known. They have to be cited. The other reason is because it's important to be able to go back and find out what sources you've consulted, where you've gone for your material, and especially if they're not readily available, how do we find them? And so that's another reason why citing your sources is important. And you also need to do it right. Why? Well, uh, as it's written in Kate Turabian's uh, book, A Manual for Writers and Research Papers, and you know we often cite Turabian. Uh, sometimes we want to take shortcuts. Uh, sometimes we just want to get the assignment done. Sometimes we just want to get finished. But we cite because we're professionals, and we train, we're training you as college students to be professional as well. And so that's why it's important. Uh, as this points out, there are programs that help you with citations, but you still need to know how to do it on your own because they're not always accurate. 
So what types of sources are we talking about? And this is uh, oftentimes confusing for a lot of people. We talk about primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. Well, what are primary sources? They're basically data, whether it be manuscripts, photographs, oral histories, from the people or the period you're researching. Now, that's very different from a secondary source. Secondary sources are those books and articles written by researchers, like historians, about the time. So most of the books you're going to read that are history books are secondary sources, except for your textbook. Your textbook, encyclopedias, other things fall into what's called uh, sometimes tertiary sources. They're written for a general audience. They're not generally cited. They just contain basic information that's available pretty much to everyone. But you have to be careful now. Sometimes secondary or tertiary sources can be primary sources. And that's kind of confusing. What do we mean by that? Well, if you're doing a history on encyclopedias, for example, or a history of textbooks, then they, in fact, become the primary source because your history is being written about them. You're going to them for the information you're writing about, and so they can be primary sources as well. And the same thing goes for secondary sources. So it can be confusing, but you just have to remember, what am I writing about? What period am I writing about, and where am I going to go to for that information? And that helps you determine what you're writing uh, about and what the primary sources are. The basics of citations are pretty straightforward, and, and, and this is true for almost any style of citation. You need the authorship. You need to know who wrote it or who produced the document or the book that you're talking about. You also need to know the title. You need to know the publication information, and you need to know specifically where it's found. Those are the basic facts. Now, it's not as simple as all that sounds. As you can see here, we do have, there's other considerations to be taken into account. But if you can remember those four things, authorship, title, publication information, and specific location, you've got your citation basics down. Now, there's also a difference between notes, and by notes, you can be talking about footnotes or endnotes. And they're written a little bit differently from bibliographic uh, references, which go at the end of an article or of a book, and I'll talk about those in a second. But the footnotes or the endnotes generally list author, title, and facts of publication in that order. Also note, uh, the author's names are written in standard order, first name first, last name last. Then they're capitalized. All titles are capitalized unless they're in a foreign language. In those cases, those might be italicized. Most titles are italicized. However, if you're talking about a cha book chapter or an article, uh, those are put in quotation marks. When you're looking at editors, uh, translators, volume numbers, those come afterward. So here's an example. George Orwell, this is a quote, George Orwell often revealed a disdain for the bourgeoisie, especially the lower middle class, whom he says displayed an, quote, attitude of sniggering superiority punctuated by bursts of vicious hatred, close quote. And there's a citation. This is 15. Notice the citation is uh, superscripted. It's elevated and up a little bit. But then the note, whether it be a footnote or an endnote, is the number isn't raised. It's the same size as the font for the footnote itself. And then it's his name in first name, last name, order, comma, the book's title, where this came from, The Road to Wigan Pier, in parentheses, facts of publication. It was published by Harcourt in New York, and you notice how the place of publication, colon, and then the house of publication, comma, the date, close parentheses, comma, the page number where that quote is found. And it's really that simple. There are plenty of online aids to help you. There's uh, Turabian has an online guide 
Chicago Manual Style has an online um, quick reference guide. In both of those, uh, you can find out ways of doing most of the quotes, uh, I'm sorry, most of the citations you're going to normally run into. Uh, although you can consult the books or the online guides for more detailed information. Now let's look at bibliographic entries and these are uh, usually reference lists or bibliographies that come at the back. They're a little bit different. First of all there's no parentheses in any of it and it's also listed uh, the author's name is last name first first name last. A little bit different. Um, and uh, the titles the ca are capitalized much the same way um, or italicized in the same way or in quotation marks in the same way as in a note. But rather than uh, commas, you're going to see periods. And so let me give you uh, a little bit b better example of this. So here is the same citation. Notice there's no page number because you're referring to the whole work. And so Orwell George, period, The Road to Wigan Pier, period, New York, colon, Harcourt, 1958. So the parentheses are gone, and you see periods in the places um, where some of the commas would have been. Now, you still see that between uh, Harcourt and the date, but otherwise, you, you, you do see the difference, I hope. So that's the basics of citation. Like I say, there's much more to it, but if you can remember those simple basics, you'll be started uh, in a good way towards doing your citations properly so you won't be guilty of plagiarism. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.